Hey everyone, welcome to Am I Missing Something? It's a podcast where we analyze popular or unpopular bands, albums, songs, in an attempt to figure out what we might be missing. Uh, the goal isn't to ridicule anybody, you know, this is just a very open discussion, but it's rather to gain, you know, a better understanding of what the majority of fans do or don't see in something, um, but we just want to wrap our heads around it just a little bit better. I'm Matt Gamba. I'm Zach Shaw. And the topic for today is Greta Van Fleet. Now, if you're not familiar with Greta Van Fleet, uh, they're known as, AK, or AKA, Led Zeppelin 2. So this band has really been turning a lot of not hands. Not the album. Not the album. Thank you for clarifying. Um, they've been turning a lot of heads because they really sound like Led Zeppelin, like scarily so much like Led Zeppelin. And they've been getting a ton of radio play. They're getting built on some major national festivals like Coachella. Uh, they've been selling out their own theater shows. They've played Jimmy Fallon. Uh, they even got invited by Elton John uh, to perform at his Oscar after party. And they've been praised by so many big name artists, including Robert Plant himself. And what makes this even more remarkable is that this is all before they've even released a full length album. So they've released two EPs. But the new album, um, the arm, Anthem of the Peaceful Army, doesn't come out until October. And they've gotten all this amazing buzz that so many bands would love to get. But in the end of the day, are they really that worth the hype? What, what am I missing? So I think one of the first things that we need to talk about when it comes down to this band uh, is, in fact, the sound. And I think that the reason why they're getting so much of this hype is because of the sound because for years and years and years ever since um really the breakup of zeppelin and then everybody got that teaser at the o2 show in england when they got back together and they performed and everybody loved it and they wanted them to do a full-blown tour and it never happened and then robert plant just goes on and on and on how he doesn't want to just be a nostalgia act now you have these kids, and I call them kids because that's what they, they are. are. They're they kids. They are kids. If you, if you watch them on any of the performances you can find on YouTube or if you watch the Jimmy Fallon performance, they're kids. And they honestly look scared. Like, it's like, how quick, how quick did this all happen to us? Like, we, we got some instruments, and they even said that they learned to play their instruments on their own. That's fine. That's great. No, that's I lo- great. Love that part of it. But... I think the problem is, is that you learn to play in a style that is so iconic that you have to do something to get over that to make yourselves known. And one of the things that I'm actually really kind of hoping is that they do something completely off the wall uh, coming up on their debut album, which... I I, I, even, I even hate to say that it's a debut album because they already have eight songs and have been on a headlining tour. And how do you headline tour with eight songs? Yeah, it's crazy. So it's going back to the point when you're talking about their kids um, and that they learn their own instruments. That's actually not a terrible thing. And it's so not by any I bring, stretch. I bring this up um, so to give you an idea of how popular Gre- Greta Van Fleet is with press. I feel like whenever they interview elder rock acts or just legendary musicians Greta Van Fleet becomes like an automatic question is like, oh what do you think of them to the point where when Rolling Stone actually interviewed Slash he because I guess Greta Van Fleet opened for a few European shows for Guns N' Roses and Slash noted how it actually makes him a little happy to see them because they're their kids just doing their thing on instruments uh and he thinks that it will definitely make a lot of kids who are doing the same thing that no one's ever heard of it's it just gives kids hope that they can do it themselves but he starts off that answer by sim- by literally saying it makes me really happy to see it i wish they didn't sound so much like led zeppelin but still the idea of effing four kids getting on stage and just playing their asses off with a couple of amps and a drum kits it's just it's a good thing but again even he like literally said they sound so much like led zeppelin right like to the point where it's just jarring and i saw one review of greta van fleet where they go on to say that you know we've been waiting for this for so long and for it to be kids that are actually doing this um that all other kids can look up to this and now they have what kids in the 70s had in zeppelin 
but they don't. <laughs> right, well, they, they don't because we don't know if this is legitimate yet. Like we know that you can, you've got eight songs. You released two EPs with a total of eight songs. The first EP, Black Smoke Rising, had four songs, and then those four songs were translated onto the second EP um, called From the Fires, where they released four other songs, which I wasn't as impressed with. So I'm uh, this Anthem of the Peaceful Army, this is going to be the definitive make or break for this band. Do you, do you have four songs that you took time to cultivate and put together and sound as much like Zeppelin as you could to get as much press as you could. And now you have to back it up with, okay, we have now a touring schedule. We have a recording schedule. We have to get this thing out there. You know, uh, the bills are starting to rack up. What's what's going on? But I'm just scratching my head. Like, is it re- are people just really de- desperate for a rock act? Like, because... They yeah they sound like B side material Led Zeppelin songs but there's n- I, I I keep scratching my head because like there's nothing that makes me go wow like it, when you listen to a whole lot of love still it's just it still kind of m- blows your mind when as soon as it, as it goes into the chorus then when the riff turns into a gigantic bombastic song. I don't get that same feeling from when, when I listen to anything from Greta Van Fleet, and I don't get that mystique that Led Zeppelin had when you saw them live. When you look at like you, they look like kids. They literally look like nothing against School of Rock, but they literally look like four kids who went to School of Rock to learn how to play, and this is their big like graduation show, and their parents are taking photos of like, oh, look at our son, he's upstage being a rock star now. Like, I just I, I don't get why they're getting so much legitimate. Co- press coverage and press or even not just press just coverage in general i honestly believe that this is uh i i would say the zeppelin songs that you love to hear just done in a different way like some of their songs and i don't have one specifically off the top of my head because i don't uh, i'm not you know that big of a fan right now well and also because it all blends together it, well yes it well it does blend together but i feel like if you take a zeppelin song like rock and roll mm-hmm. and you say okay this is one of their their main rock songs you know th- this is just a straight ahead song they didn't try to do anything like off the charts like um like maybe like 10 years gone or uh stairway to heaven or even like that middle breakdown piece and whole lot of love um there's nothing like that anywhere on Greta Van Fleet. It's just, you take a song like Rock and Roll, and then you take Greta Van Fleet songs, and it's like, okay, we have songs that line up like this with Zeppelin, and it sounds what you would expect, like a straight-ahead Zeppelin sound. I'm going to pose That's almost... probably the worst description of it, but it's <laughs> the best way that I could put it. I'm going to pose a comparison. Okay. So, uh, first off, not to make it, you feel old, Matt, but 15 years ago, uh, Jet came out with their album, Get Born. Do, 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 do. Now, and I bring that up because I feel like when they came out, it was, everyone was claiming, oh, a resurgence, a, a resurgence of the garage rock that we grew up with in the 70s is coming back. And Jet is such a great example of that. When... Are you gonna be my girl? I'm sorry, but that literally is "Lust for Life" by Iggy Pop. Like different vocals. I honestly, I never liked Jet all that much. They actually, I'll give them this much: that some there's actually some better songs there, but kind of similar. Well, whereas Greta Van Fleet sounds exactly like Led Zeppelin, Greta Van Fleet was more so they sounded like a '70s '80s rock band. Now, the reason why I bring this up: Do we actually feel? that this is just like Greta Van Fleet is actually going to be the next big thing that like people like that they really are going to be the face of rock and roll or is this kind of like and I, nothing against Jet but is this a flash in the pan like Jet because let's be honest after that album kind of ran through its cycle the next album didn't do so well and now we don't hear anything from Jet well Jet's if anyone's, completely gone if anyone in the band Jet is listening to this let us know that you're still out there all right I can I can see where you're going with that. I'm going to go a little bit more comparison on my side cuz I was never crazy on Jet. But I do remember another band that they had the chops. They were there. 
then they made the dumbest comment you could ever make, and then it was downhill from there, and I think that's where Greta Van Fleet is going. Oasis. Oasis, mm. until they said that they were going to be bigger than the Beatles, they had it. And then they lost it. And then the brothers fought and were going to throw each other off balconies and so on and so forth. And there was the downfall. However, up until that point, they had the new wave of British rock. That new invasion. That was it. And then... But with Greta Van Fleet outwardly stating that they were not influenced by Zeppelin... In interviews, they've said this. I think they're trying to distance themselves from anything that could even remotely sound like they're saying, like, yeah, we're going to be bigger than Zeppelin. But the clothing, the sound, the songs, the writings on the wall, if you just admit that you were influenced by Zeppelin, I think you're still going to be okay as long as you don't say you're going to be bigger than Zeppelin. It's it's funny that you say that because... so. Rob Plant, as I mentioned earlier, even he's kind of like given them a, you know, a slightly backhanded nod, um, you know, joking like, yeah, they they sound I, I kind of hate the singer because he sounds so much like me. Um, but he mentioned in an uh, interview, I guess, earlier this year, um, how he, he was saying that he borrowed his voice from somebody I know very well. But what are you going to do? At least he's got a bit of style because he said he based his whole style off Aerosmith quote end quote uh as plant said while rolling his eyes so even plant while giving them a compliment recognizes like guys come on just say it come on right and you know the once again the writings on the wall if you take there's a very famous picture of robert plant i don't remember where it's from but it's just him standing on stage open vest staring at the camera like yeah i'm the shit Mm -hmm. and now all of a sudden uh this kid shows up on stage shirt wide open chest hanging out there look like doing his thing for the camera like dude you know exactly where you got this but from. he doesn't but that's the other thing like so i look at this band they got the outfits they got the sound but they don't got the swagger this there is still a, there's zero swagger it, it almost feels like there's like it's not even like they're a perfect reincarnation of Led Zeppelin. Like they're still missing two key ingredients of that made Led Zeppelin special. It was the mystique and the songwriting, which granted you can make the argument and a legit argument that Led Zeppelin ripped off a lot of blues artists. Um, in fact, I think they lost some lawsuits to blues artists because they, it was a little too obvious that they stole riffs um, from, from them. But it, it's still like, I, 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 I keep getting mind boggled at how they're getting so much praise for still missing so many key elements, which is songwriting and just overall stage presence. I think it's the, the timing. Now, when Zeppelin was around, everybody and their mother was doing rock and blues and things like that. Mm-hmm. Now, since the rock genre has so watered down and it's so blended with everything else that's out there and all the electronic stuff that's being put into music nowadays, I think to find four kids that are just playing their instruments and they're up there on stage and they sound legit and it sounds like something that we're we're familiar with, I think that's what makes this so easy to latch onto because it's also very familiar for those people who are in higher positions, higher than ours, very much so higher positions in influential media for them to latch on and say, oh my God, it's, it's Zeppelin, but it's kids. And oh my God, that's the next big thing. I think that's why it's so easy for them to, to say that, oh my God, this is going to be so great because they lived through Zeppelin. So you're saying that we're just so desperate for the next rock big sensation? I think that somebody out there is very desperate to find something with some validity and some influence of the past 
because a lot of people can say, oh yeah, I, I'm influenced by Pink Floyd, I'm influenced by Metallica, I'm influenced by this person and that person, and then their music absolutely comes out sounding nothing like that, mm. you know, and, and then it's like all like four chord harmonies, synth, synth backings and, and vocal tunings and things like that, and it just waters everything down that you said that you're influenced by. But now for kids to come out and do what they're doing and not acknowledge what their influences are when it's very obvious, I think they're playing it safe. I guess it's just, it's still, I mean, whether or not they acknowledge that they're influenced by Led Zeppelin or not, I guess maybe this is just me being a stubborn, stubborn or old man. There's, there, there are rock, young rock bands who are, I would argue, doing things that are a little different, that are still refreshing, that are still, I don't want to say radio friendly, but are still something that mass media, radio, or TV could get behind. But instead, we're just relying on something that sounds nostalgic. Well, that's just like using Biggie Smalls to advertise for Oreos now. You went from gangster rap to selling cookies. It's Nostalgia has always been a big part of everything that everybody's yeah. done because now you're trying to target specific people and if the only rock stations that are really out there taking a chance now are classic rock stations they are yeah, looking for true. that next new song and the next new song just happens to be by kids that sound like led zeppelin so you are going to latch on to that in a very very big way no that's that's absolutely true i mean even the stations that you know go on and on about how they're playing the newest rock music that's still half classic rock songs or exactly. songs from the slash you know yeah that's true i mean or I mean, there, yeah, I don't want to name names or stations in general, but like, just I feel like for every one new song, there's five songs from 20 years ago. Exactly. If you're lucky, even that's considered new. Uh, or on the newer side, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's actually, if you think about it, it is remarkable to hear an Alice in Chains song on a classic rock station, because now they are classic rock. Correct. And just to summarize, you know, a, a little bit about Greta Van Fleet, it's refreshing to hear something that's it sounds legit it's re, it's refreshing to hear that however can you do something original mm. that's what i'm going to say this and the 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 biggest intrigue of their new album the anthem of the peaceful army that's going to be coming out at least for me is there was there's 10 tracks on this i think it's the ninth or the eighth or the ninth track that they listed it's called Blood Brothers. I'm really curious to see if they're going to try Iron Maiden. No, they're not. You know they're not. Nobody, no band no, ever thought know. they were, no band ever, nobody ever thought they were going to do Zeppelin again. And here we are having this discussion. I, I, I'm going to even go on the record and saying, I'll give you five bucks if it's actually a cover of that song. <laughs> Could it be a Zeppelinized do you cover wanna, Do you want to make Iron a, you know, right now on record, $5 bet. Five dollar bet. If that is actually an Iron Maiden cover, I will give you five dollars. If it like, is not, you owe me five dollars. Sounds fine. All right. You can't see this right now, but we're shaking hands. Yes. On this agreement. All right. So, let's uh, let's wrap this thing up here. So, did we actually learn anything more about Greta Van Fleet than when we started? I'm still scratching my head. But I at, the, at the same time, I mean, I. You made. I mean, I agree that nostalgia is such a strong, strong, strong motivation, especially when it comes to radio. And like I mentioned with Jet, I mean, I would argue that that single "Are You Gonna Be My Girl" that was purely a nostalgia um, play, or that whole album just brought back a lot more. I I I, I just wish that. It wasn't so on. I mean, it's impressive that he sounds just like a young Robert Plant, um, but I I still don't understand why um, they're being held as such a unique thing. When I don't know, I guess it, hopefully the new album will make me turn around a little bit more, and maybe I will hear. That's the other thing. I'm hoping that maybe on this new album I will hear a whole lot of Rosie. No, I'm sorry. Not whole. Maybe I will hear that song as well. <laughs> but I meant a whole lot of love. Um, that I will hear something that will literally, as soon as you hear the first notes, make you stop in your place and go, "Oh yeah, this song's come." Like, I just don't hear that game-changing sing single yet. And maybe it's just too soon to tell. 
I can I can agree to that. That there's not a song that grabs me immediately out of the gate. You know, one day when I was just listening, I heard another song from them, and I was like, "Is this a Zeppelin song that I've never heard?" Nope, it's Greta Van Fleet. I feel like radio stations in general like to play the game. Is it Greta Van Fleet or Led Zeppelin? Yes, and you know, I really feel like I still am missing something about this band there's just something i can't put my finger on and i do feel that the nostalgia like you said is a very very strong influencer and i'm really curious that with this are other bands going to start coming out of the woodwork that are going to start sounding like other classic bands because this band has got that press like are we going to find the next Pink Floyd? Are we going to find the next Bruce Springsteen? Are we going to find the next Billy Joel or something like that? You know, are we going to find those acts just because something like this took off? I, I would argue that this is actually a response to that trend already happening. I don't think that I, trend is anything new. But I think I, there's always bands that try to sound like the next Bruce Springsteen or Pink Floyd. It's just not as obvious as this. I think they're not they're, I would say that they have their own rights to them, like that they're decent, but to this level, like now that we've had a direct quote unquote clone to Led Zeppelin and it's taken over in a way that I don't think anybody ever really anticipated, are we start pushing that envelope a little bit harder now? Like, are we going to try to find somebody who can solo like David Gilmore and have the songwriting of Pink Floyd? And are we going to find somebody who has the storytelling ability of both Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel. Are we going to find that now? And with the 20s being right around the corner, are we going to start looking for bands that, you know, have a, a swagger from the 1920s? Are, are we going to start doing more of this uh, kitschy type stuff mm -hmm. so instead of trying to find new original acts that progress rock as a genre instead of just reverting back to something that we know and that we're familiar with from 40, 50 years ago. Well, I feel like we said it before. We'll say it again. Nostalgia, a hell of a drug. It is. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. And if you completely disagree with what we just said, let us know on Epic Footnote Production Socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Let us know what you think about Greta Van Fleet. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back soon. See you later, guys.